All right, section 5.10, last section of the semester. All right, they go and talk about 5.10, how the um, natural law of function was created and so forth. They're discovered. And you could go ahead and read the book for that stuff. I'm not going to bore you all with the details of that. All right, so let's look at logarithmic and other functions here. I have a definition. It says if a is greater than zero and r is a real number, a to the r is defined by a to the r is equal to e raised to the r natural log of a. Well, here's how I like to think it is. I like to think of it as, suppose you start out with this. d raised to the r times the natural log of a. I like to think of that property logarithms that says we could take this number r and move it as the exponent of argument, and then we have e to the natural log of a to the r. Or I could put it like that. Now what happens when this base is the same as that base? Everything falls out except the argument. And that's what basically this is saying, okay? Now we're gonna use that to simplify expressions whenever we do some work. Let's look at this example. Let f of x be this function, find the simplest exact value of f evaluated natural log of 8. So f evaluated the natural log of 8. Well, that's e to the natural log of 8 plus 7 times e to the negative natural log of 8. Because we already had the negative sign there. Well, this part just turns into 8 plus 7. How about this part? What could I do with that negative? That's like a negative 1 right here, right? So we can move it to the exponent of the argument. We have e to the natural log of 8 to the negative 1. Well, that's 8 plus 7 times. What's e raised to the natural log of some argument? It's that argument, 8 to the negative 1. Well, that gives me 8 plus 7 times 1 over 8 to the first. I could write that as. Well, that's 8 plus 7 eighths. And I get a common denominator here. What does this give me? 64 over 8 was 64 plus 7. 71 over 8. That's the simplest form I could put it in.